Kamusta kayo lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Crossover. I'm your host tonight, Marky Mark. Here we are back at the studio after all that shooting that we had at Jurassic Park and at Nathan Phil Square for the Raptors Championship. But here we are, we have our guests. Well, we'll introduce our co-host first. How are you feeling today, Ingrid? Great. Great. I know we lost each other at the I parade, <laughs> but we found each other back again at the studio. And other than that, we also have our special guest tonight. Introduce yourself because we've been trying to have this happen for a very long time, but thank God we have it before our season finale next week. So I'm really grateful to have you here. Introduce yourself to the audience right there. Hey, Jason Tianko. Um, happy to be here, as you mentioned. It's, it's been a long time coming, yeah. but yeah, definitely honored to be here. I think it's a perfect time too after yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Charles, I mean, you got the nice shirt too, guys. Fun guy right here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to... I mean, Kawhi Leonard has just given us what we wanted to have in... in after but, 24 years. After 24 years, right? Right? 24 yeah. years. It's 24 long years. That long, yeah. right? Uh, I guess before we get into the Raptors, let's talk a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about your story because, you know, getting to know you now, I know the story that you've been through. Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, well, for me, uh, uh, what many people would say is basketball has been a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, it's opened a lot of doors uh, for me, um, and it's something that uh, I've, in some parts of my life, taken advantage of, and, you know, like, the combination is here. I'm, I'm someone that has, has lived and died with basketball, be, been able to create a, a huge network uh, from it, and um, just someone here that's a fan of the sport, first and foremost, for sure. So then being a fan of the Raptors, like, who did you grow up with, like, looking up to and everything when it came to ball? Uh, uh, this might age me some, but uh, <laughs> growing up, um, I was a two-guard playing in, in my younger days, and uh, Reggie Miller was my favorite player. Okay. Um, and uh, although I will say after the advent of the Raptors, um, a boogie or Alvin Williams became my favorite player. You have to cheer for someone that's on the home team for sure. But yeah. Reggie growing up and uh, Alvin Williams shortly thereafter. So, How did basketball start for you? Like, how did you discover basketball? Is it the same kind of story the way Filipino goes? But, or do you have kind of a... Yeah, I, I think it's similar to a lot of people in our, in our community in terms of how they get introduced to the game. My, my dad and all my uncles, mm -hmm. um, they played in, in Filipino men's leagues across the city. Mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up, my, my dad played in Filcan mm -hmm. um, and uh, a, a league called Palaro, which, which was out in the east end of Toronto as well. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I remember, at the tender age of, say, three, um, I had the basketball in my hand. Every weekend, we'd, I'd watch my father and my uncles play, yeah. you know, every Saturday, every Sunday, and that's kind of how I got introduced to the game. Wow. Tell us a little bit about the history of the growth of Filipino basketball in, in, in Canada or in Toronto where you are to where you started. Who did you kind of play with to, to players now and you know, compare how it was back then to how oh, that, it is now? Um, I, I think when, when I was starting to play, it was very localized. Mm -hmm. Like you, you had leagues you know, out in Scarborough, you had leagues out in Mississauga, but they're very isolated from one another. If you look at the, the Filipino-Canadian basketball landscape now... Mm -hmm. um, it's huge it's, now. It, and it, it's huge, but it's, there's a lot of overlap. You have players from the East teaming up with players in the West, playing mm -hmm. in, you know, Central Leagues, playing in East Leagues, um, and not only, like, within the city of Toronto, but you have tournaments like NABA and FBNA where like Filipino Canadian teams that represent whether it be Vancouver, Winnipeg, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, they all come together once or twice a year to play in tournaments and at least when I was growing up that didn't happen mm -hmm. but to see now that like those are those events that bring in teams not only within Canada but in North America together that become like highlights of these like these communities like seasons like for with regards to tournaments the game has grown like leaps and bounds over the years too. right yeah. so we've seen that the growth too um tell us a little bit this is kind of what i wanted to get to, to our audience too about your story how has basketball kind of shaped your career or shaped where you are now um in, in terms of shaping my career um i've always prided myself to kind of always be surrounded by the game, whether it be like professional development, 
um, or even personal development, like just building your own network. I always wanted to make sure that I was, if not a participant, someone that was maybe behind the scenes that would like, you know, create an activation for our community. Um, and I guess from professionally, um, I've been fortunate enough to like network with people to to have at least a small hand in creating some of the, the tournaments in the city, um, just growing the game, um, whether it be on, uh, on a media level or um, through mentorship programs or whatnot, but always having basketball be a part of what that activation is. Um, it's provided me with, with a multitude of uh, experiences, whether it be um, Soul Shift, a digital magazine that uh, I was a part of um, for over three years, or even with Rise Tribe, um, and working with MLSE and the, the, the professional um, uh, development that, and, and opportunities that that's created um, to build basketball within our community has, has always been something that's like been near and dear to my heart. So, Well, you can maybe tell us a little bit about that with, ML, uh, with Rise Tribe. How did this start for you guys? Because this has been a big, you know, in yeah. terms of the movement that you guys have done, yeah. getting rap, Raptors, Filipino Heritage, and other Raptors yeah. Sound Effect. Tell us a little more, or elaborate more into this organization. Yeah, so for, for those that don't know, Rise Tribe is, is, a, is a nonprofit organization um, whose mandate is really to empower like Filipino Canadian youth. Um, whether it be through activations of uh, like networking, mentorship, leadership, education, th those are kind of the ways that we we create touch points for our community um, in terms of like building or empowering uh, them up. Uh, I would say that just being a part of that, it's it's provided some opportunities for us, like you know. I think in 2016, I, I joined Rise Tribe, mm -hmm. and I was kind of known as maybe one of the basketball guys within the group. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to, one of my first projects with Rise Tribe was to, to help uh, pitch to MLSC that uh, uh, a celebration of Filipino culture and community tied in with our love of basketball was something that needed to happen within Toronto. Um, and that's really what sparked Filipino Heritage Night or Filipino Heritage Game um, with MLSE kind of um, brought about. So that was three years ago. Um, since then, we've had three Filipino Heritage Night games, if you will, um, with the Raptors 905. This past season, we had our first uh, Filipino Heritage Night with the Big Brother Toronto Raptors team, yeah, 2019 amazing. NBA World Champs. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's a partnership that we've we've really appreciated and continue to to plan on building upon. So, I mean, it's good that just because like Filipino Canadians are like they're so well known in the states too, right? They're so heavily concentrated because they do those events like yeah. in California, like what we talked about earlier before, right? So you said like in Sacramento, like the mm -hmm. Los Golden Angeles, State. Golden State, yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah, Rivers like during our research, I think there was four other markets, um, mm -hmm. at least four other NBA markets that celebrated anything related to Filipino heritage. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, LA Clippers, Sacramento, Chicago is one, um, and Golden State, obviously they have their official Filipino heritage night. Mm -hmm. And like, we all know the, the, the community that we have here in Toronto, it's and felt fun. that it was necessary, it was something that needed to happen. We needed to put a spotlight on our community mm -hmm. because we love the game, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say that all three of us here love the game. We've, mm -hmm. we've kind of grown up uh, with the game all our lives. Um, and it's something that we kind of wanted to like celebrate. Um, and it just made sense to, to approach it. MLSE. I agree. I mean, one of the biggest fans to be you know, in the community that are the biggest consumer and the biggest watchers of not just NBA, but basketball in general. general. Yeah, you guys at, at least in my them. household. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, sure. that's, that's the only thing on TV. <laughs> so. I just, I just yeah. feel like with us, since like, you know, due to hype being a factor for most of us, we can't make it to the NBA, or maybe one day we would. It's just, yeah. I feel like if we're not in, in it to play, I feel like we're just heavily revolved around it. Yeah, that's the way for I sure. see it. For sure. Yeah. And like, it's, it, whether it's official or not, I, I think for the country of the Philippines, uh, um, it's our national sport, right? It is. So. 